In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through Chapter 4.1, Government Macroeconomic Intervention. Firstly, we need to look at macroeconomic aims. The first aim for any government is economic growth. This is the actual annual increase in the level of national output, which is expressed as GDP, gross domestic product. This refers to the increase in a country's real GDP and a practical measure of standards of living in the country. It also measures the combination of the increase in the quantity and quality of the factors of production within the economy. And having economic growth usually means an increase in aggregate demand for all goods and services in the economy. And the reasons why governments aim to have economic growth is that more goods and services will be produced within the economy, the standards of living will be elevated, the quality of the output will be increased, the output of goods and services can be increased to match high levels of demand, which avoids inflation. The second aim is full employment or low unemployment. This is when people are willing and able to work and are actively seeking employment, but they are unable to find work. As stated, the government aims to reduce unemployment so these are the people that are willing and able to work, but are unable to find a job. This is because low levels of unemployment means higher levels of productivity. And the standards of living within the country will increase. This is due to the productive nature of employment. And also, people with jobs will have disposable income to spend in the economy. The reasons for low unemployment is that the government receives tax revenue from their income and at the same time they don't need to spend on any unemployment benefits which are unproductive, unlike a subsidy. And due to higher tax revenue generation, more spending on public goods can occur which elevates the standard of living further. The next aim is stable prices or low inflation. Inflation is the sustained rise in the general price level in an economy. The government's aim is to ensure that the price level does not change significantly over time and the value of money will largely retain its value. This means that the purchasing power of wages and savings will not noticeably change. And the reasons why government aim for stable prices is that there's greater economic certainty for all stakeholders such as consumers and businesses. This prevents losing international competitiveness due to exports and governments and businesses will find it easier to plan with greater confidence within the economy. Another aim for governments is the stability of its balance of payments. The balance of payments is a financial record of a country's transactions with the world. This includes the country's trade in goods and services, records credit and debit items, and also long-term deficits result in uncompetitive exports. And the reasons for why governments aim for balance of payment stability is that if imports are greater than exports over a period of time, the country will go into a deficit. And if exports are greater than imports over time, there may be a lack of choice of products for the customers to enjoy, which could lead to local monopolies over time. And also, the government wants to maintain financial stability. The next aim is the redistribution of income. This is to achieve greater equality in the distribution of income in the country. Now, here are some fun facts of 2025. The world's top 10 richest people are worth about 1.8 to 1.99 trillion dollars. And it takes 452 million to 498 million of the poorest people in the world to match the top 10 in 2025. Just to put it in perspective, if you were to receive one US dollar per second, it will take you 31,689 years in order to hit 1 trillion. So what governments aim to do is to tax a higher percentage of the rich compared to the poor and at the same time supporting the poor using the tax revenue raised from the rich. And the reasons why governments aim for a redistribution of income 
because this will reduce the hardship of many poor people within the economy. And the problem of inequality will grow due to lack of government intervention. As the rich usually get richer as they have access to better education and resources. This may cause unrest and social injustice. And the final aim is environmental sustainability. This is to meet the current needs without jeopardizing the needs of future generations. Governments aim to conserve the natural world in a healthy state by not depleting non-renewable resources such as fossil fuels. And as greenhouse gases are emitted, the government will take measures to prevent climate change. And governments usually do this by setting the rules and regulations for the private firms to follow. And the reasons why governments aim for environmental sustainability is to protect the country and others from impacts of a declining environment. And protecting the environment prevents severe weather changes, including heat waves, storms and floods, etc. etc. And due to this severe weather, there will be a loss of life and infrastructure. And lastly, protecting the environment will ensure a healthy state for future generations to come. Now moving on to the conflicts between the macroeconomic aims. Firstly, there's a conflict between full employment and stable prices, as full employment means more spending, as full employment means that the disposable income increases for individuals, which results in more spending in the country. This leads to higher levels of aggregate demand, which leads to higher prices. And low unemployment will push up the wages as firms compete for more labour, which results in higher cost of production. The next conflict is full employment and the balance of payments. High levels of output means high levels of exports. And due to higher levels of production, this will lead to a rise in employment. And this leads to an increased demand for imports, and imports may exceed exports, which results to an imbalance of payments. And lastly, raw materials may be imported due to elevated productivity due to full employment. And the last conflict is economic growth and environmental sustainability. As it is a known fact that if we want to increase economic growth, the expense will always be the environment. Fossil fuels are used to provide energy to construct buildings, heat homes and cool homes. Some firms use unsustainable activities such as discharging their waste into rivers instead of disposing them properly. This is due to the cost associated with this. And lastly, we work with the assumption that firms strive for profit and growth over the environment. I hope that helped. I hope you guys have a good day. Bye bye.